John. And I'm Tyler. <laughs> and we're here to welcome you to Palm Sunday. We were so excited. We were in the jungle, right? The palms <laughs> are here. It's exciting. We hope that you picked up your palms this week too uh, and are able to wave them around at home. We love it because uh, now today is the day we celebrate Jesus coming into Jerusalem for his final week, which is sad because... Yep, we know what's... Because uh, he dies. Yeah, right? we know we're what's just, about to happen. just going to give you the spoiler right away. He <laughs> dies. But yep. the real spoiler is... He raises again on the third day. That's right. On Easter morning, he's alive again. Uh, so that's what we're here to celebrate that final week. Palm Sunday is my favorite Sunday of the year. I absolutely love it. It's so much fun. So I hope you have these palms. Feel free to raise them and wave them at any time during the service, especially when we say Hosanna. All right? Whenever we say Hosanna, get those out. Go and for it. And be sure to take pictures. Send them to us. We would love to see everybody at home. Uh, last week, we did... Um, animal pictures worshiping with you <laughs> so right. you go ahead and use that same hashtag cp lakewood and that'll be able to uh, help us find there pictures you. rather quickly take some fun pictures of worship at home we would love to see them everybody else would love to see them too and uh use the hashtag cp lakewood and we'll find those on facebook or instagram so what we want you to do right now before we get started here before it's time for worship and we get into the message time is we'd love for you to check in we want to know that you're here we want to stay connected so uh use the chat box that you're in and let us know that you're here. Uh, give us a wave, give us a thumbs up, say hi, I'm here. If you're worshiping with three or four people in your house, say, hey, it's me, plus five. Or you can leave and list the people that are worshiping with you. That's cool. If you don't want to do that, you can fill out our connect card at the website at cplakewood.info. It's right there under it says check in. You can check in and let us know that you're with us. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, the last thing to do is the one thing that's most important when worshiping online is to help invite other people in. So what can people do to help us out with that? Yeah, if you are um, watching us on Facebook, you can click the share button, which should be in the lower corner of your screen. Uh, that will allow for you to put it on your timeline and let all of your friends see that you are with us today. Yeah, and the new thing they have there are watch parties. Yeah. So you can click start a watch party, and it will take you to your own kind of viewing party that your friends can come in and you can chat. And that chat isn't on the main chat feed, which is okay. Yeah. But you can have your own kind of party with that. So we hope that that is a lot of fun and you can help other people find out more uh, about Crosspoint and really about Jesus that way. Absolutely. So Tyler's going to be your host for today. He'll be on chatting with you uh, on all the platforms, whether you're on your website or Facebook. We've got a few other hosts, too, who will introduce themselves to you online. Uh, feel free to ask them for, well, not for anything, for prayer requests, for any uh, questions about the service or about Crosspoint or how you can get involved with us. They are here for you. So, Tyler, thanks for being with us today. Yeah. Without further ado, it is time to worship. So enjoy this time. Love Palm Sunday. And here we go. Let's get those palm branches going. Good morning, Crosspoint. We are so excited to have you here worshiping with us this morning. Happy Palm Sunday. I hope that you were able to come by this week and grab some palms at home. So make sure you have those ready and out to be waved during the service. So when we get started, which is right now, I hope that you can check in with us and fill out stuff online, check out here on Facebook. We are also live on our website and through YouTube. So with that being said, let's worship together.
Hey everybody, it's Pastor John, and I'm excited that you're joining us today for a very special Palm Sunday worship. I hope you have those palm branches out, that you're waving them during Hosanna, uh, because the King is here. He has come into Jerusalem. He has arrived in town. The biggest game around is here. So we're celebrating today together wherever you are. We're very excited about that. We'd love for you to let us know that you're here. Go ahead and leave a comment in whatever feed that you're watching right now or fill out a uh, check-in card at our website at cblakewood.info. Let us know that you're here. If this is your first time joining us here at Crosspoint, we hope that worship is a great blessing for you. and We would love for you to let us know that you're worshiping with us. Hopefully we can connect with you through the week and uh, help you out in any way that we can. We would also love for you to help other people experience this incredible time of worship this morning. So go ahead and click that share button. It's probably down at the bottom of your feed. Uh, let people know that uh, they can join us right now as well. Join you too. Uh, so have fun chatting with each other. Uh, you are not alone. Uh, we are all worshiping together. Uh, so have fun hanging out in the comment feeds. Uh, start a watch party on Facebook and enjoy this time together. With that, we've got one more song for you before we dig into Palm Sunday Scripture. So let's go ahead and let's sing.
much that you have come to be our God, that you that you rode in while people shouted and sang your praises, knowing very well that by the end of the week you would be betrayed and killed, Lord. But thank you that we know the promise of Easter morning. Thank you that we get to celebrate it each year and remember that you conquered death and you conquered sin. Lord, as we worship today and as we remember and tell the story of you this week, may your Holy Spirit stir within us. May you open our hearts and our minds to receive your word. And may your joy and your love and your confidence be spread across our communities and our country. Lord, may your name be known. We pray all of this in your powerful and holy name. Amen. Hey everybody, it's Pastor John again. Uh, thank you for worshiping with us here on Palm Sunday. It's my favorite Sunday of the year. Uh, so let us know that you're worshiping with us. Go ahead and check in by letting us know that you're here in the comments, wherever you're watching. Or go to our website, cplakewood.info, and fill out the check-in card that's there. Uh, for just a few moments, we want to focus on uh, something that's important to our spiritual health, our spiritual life, which is generosity. Uh, it's this time during our service that we're going to receive an offering. And in just a few moments on the screen, there's going to be some ways that you can do that digitally. Um, generosity is something that really gets at the heart of who we think that we are. If we realize that we're stewards of everything that we've been given, we know that it's not ours to start with, but that God blesses us and richly gives us everything we need for, well, for our enjoyment, uh, for our sustenance, and just for life. And so we share some of that. We give back a portion of what God has blessed us with back to Him. That's what offering at church is truly all about. It's a way to give to support what God is doing in the community, and that's exactly what you'd be doing by giving here to Crosspoint. Uh, we only can do what we're doing today because there are so many generous people who love what we're doing and support it with their financial resources. So here uh, on the screen there are a couple of ways that you can give digitally. There's a way you can give right on our website, you can text to give, or you can use the app that we use, Church Center, and give really easily right through there. As always, the U.S. mail is an option. You can always send a check into our location, and uh, we're very grateful you receive that. So I'm going to give you a couple moments uh, to go ahead and take part in this on your own. You may have to go away from uh, the stream right now to do so, um, but make sure and make your way back here in about 20 seconds. Thank you for that. Now, uh, we're going to get into scripture here as we talk about the Palm Sunday story, and I hope you have your palm branches at home. Hopefully you pick some of those up this weekend, either from Cross Point or somewhere else, and you can wave them as we go along. So whenever we say, Hosanna, what should we do? We wave the palm branches. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Typically, if we'd be here, we'd be having a procession. Maybe your kids have already run around the house one time, waving those palm branches, uh, doing the parade that we traditionally do here at Cross Point, uh, but today we want to dig into this by talking about this in such a way, uh, I guess under the title, Stepping into a New Life. How do we step into a new life? Now I think that most of us know right now that we haven't just stepped into a new life, but we've been kind of thrown, maybe even projected or hurled into a new life right now. Everything is different. The way that we shop is different. The way that we talk to our friends is different. The way that we hang out with them is different. The way we do work is different. The way we do school is different. In fact, it's very hard to find a few things that aren't different at all. We have all stepped into a brand new life. Question is, what are we going to do about it? Is it really new? Is it novel? Is it something that's never been done before? Are we really all alone in that? Now, I think what we see today in the story of Palm Sunday is that no, we're not alone. It's been done before. And in fact, when we focus on Jesus, we see that stepping into a new life can be incredibly exciting, it can be incredibly fulfilling, and it can lead into something even better than you could have imagined. So let's go ahead and open up our Bibles and really dig into this Palm Sunday story. So we're going to go to Mark chapter 11, and hopefully you have another device that you can look this up, or you have a Bible, like the real ones that are made out of paper, that'd be great. 
Or if you're watching online on our website, there's a Bible tool right there that you can click over in the tab in the chat box and you can look this right up. But we're going to go to Mark chapter 11, the first 11 verses actually, and talk through them. So let's go ahead. Uh, in verse 1, Mark chapter 11, verse 1, it says this. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the towns of Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives. All right. So what happened here? Well, they're approaching Jerusalem. Jesus and his disciples are ending their journey together. The disciples don't quite know that yet, but Jesus does. He's going into Jerusalem at least for the third time during his ministry, but he's been to Jerusalem every year of his life, many times, multiple times per year. Because as somebody who grew up in a Jewish household, he was commanded to pilgrimage back to Jerusalem at numerous times during the year to do well, lots of different things. Lots of different ways to worship, lots of different ways to be community with others. He'd been there a lot, but this was going to be the last time. Now, approaching Jerusalem, stepping into the city is something like none other. You would have experienced uh, coming in through a hillside in a tiny, narrow um, walkway with people who would have been singing songs and singing uh, praises during this time. Because as you approach Jerusalem, there were all kinds of things to do and to see and experience and ways to worship God as you did so. So stepping and approaching Jerusalem wasn't something that was, um, you know, just as normal as you driving from one town to another. Sometimes in our, in our suburban lives, we can end up going across two or three towns in one 15-minute trip and not even notice the difference. But that was not the case when you approached Jerusalem. You knew that you were stepping into someplace different, a holy city, somewhere where God's presence dwelled. So what happens next? They're approaching this. They, they come to the towns of Bethphage and Bethany and the Mount of Olives. So Jesus sends two of his disciples ahead. He says, go into that village over there, he tells them, and as soon as you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, what are you doing? Just say, the Lord needs it and will return it soon. So the two disciples left and found the colt standing in the street tied outside the front door. As they were untying it, some bystanders demanded, what are you doing untying that colt? They said what Jesus told them to say. And they were permitted to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it, and he sat on it. That's, that's kind of astounding. Like we've seen Jesus do miracles where he takes uh, fishes and loaves and, and multiplies them exponentially. We've seen him raise people from the dead. But this, we haven't told him, like, we haven't seen him tell his disciples to steal something, have we? Like, this is new. This is something different. He's like, that colt, go and take it. It'll be okay. Seems strange. When we dig into it a little more, we see that when Jesus tells them to do this, he's fulfilling prophecy from the Old Testament, that this is what the Messiah would do when the Messiah came. The one who had promised since the beginning of time, who would come and save the people, this Messiah would do something just like this. So it also tells you when you see him tell them to untie it and bring it here. It's a strange command, right? But I think it gives a little glimpse into how the disciples view Jesus and how well, what they can learn from him. When he says untie it and bring it here, what is he saying? He's saying that he has the authority over all things, even all stuff. He's the one who's the king. He's the one who has the power. He's the one that can use the things of this world to bring about the good of his kingdom. Now, pause on that for a second. Jesus is the one who can use the things of this world to bring about the good of his kingdom. How can he do that now with you? How is he doing that now in your life? What is he using that is good right now to bring about the good things of his kingdom? All right. Now, the next part of the story is really fascinating, too. We already see Jesus have great power and exercise that authority, and the disciples listen to him and follow him. But the next part's kind of neat, right? So we're back in Mark chapter 11, and we're in verse 8. It says, Many in the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, uh, ahead into Jerusalem, and others spread leafy branches they had cut in the fields. Jesus was in the center of the procession, and the people all around him were shouting. So did you catch that? What did the people throw on the ground in front of him that he might ride over on this donkey? 
Well, there were two things. Many people threw their cloaks, and many other people threw palm branches. Now, what's the name of this Sunday? It's Palm Sunday. Do you see how easily this Sunday could have been named Cloak Sunday? I mean, really, they're both right there. Uh, half the people threw cloaks, half the people threw palms. Could have been Cloak Sunday. That could have been very, a lot, well, could have been a lot more expensive as well, um, to buy these special cloaks that we'd have to throw down. And it gets a little messy, and it's, it's a little much, right? I was at a church um, a long time ago where I was preaching on a Palm Sunday, and we were preaching about this, and we were parading up the aisle, and a, a bunch of the guys who were sitting in the center aisle just took their coats off, and they threw them down in the aisle, and I stopped and laughed, and they laughed, and it was funny. And then we didn't walk over them, because that would have been really rude, but we kept waving our palm branches. It was a lot of fun. This is Palm Sunday, because we remember that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey as people cheered him and waved excitedly, ready for this king to come, ready for the one to come who was, well, what was he going to do? What was his task? What was he here for? Well, what did the people think? What did they think he was here for? Well, what were they shouting? Let's go back to scripture in verse 9. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. They were shouting Hosanna. And what does that word mean? If you Google it right now, it'll probably just say an exclamation of praise and joy. Well, I mean, that's okay. It's a little sterile, though. It's not really the thought of what these people are saying and in the context of what's happening. Hosanna in and their language really meant, please, Lord, save us. Please, Lord, be with us. Please, Lord, make us whole again. The people were shouting to Jesus as if he were a king who had conquered their hearts, who was riding into the holy city. And they were stepping up in this procession and walking behind him and beside him, ready to follow him. I mean, this is pretty amazing stuff, right? They know that he's the, the one who has been foretold to come, and he is now in their midst. And they say, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, for he comes in the name of the Lord. That's fascinating, too. He's coming with the power and with the identity of God himself. They've heard the miracles. They've seen what he's done. They've heard his teachings, how he taught like no others. They've seen how much he's loved. They've seen how he's shown the Father's heart to them. And they know that he comes from God. And because of this, what they say next is, Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. So the world has changed, they say. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is here. It has come. We are now made whole. This is what they know. This is what they're excited about. Hosanna in the highest. So wave those palm branches. Wave them along with the crowd because we know that the Lord has come to save us. He has come to be the one in the name of the Lord to bring us salvation. That's who Jesus is. So let's see um, what Jesus has done. Well, what does he do next? In verse 11, our section finishes off with this. And Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went back out to Bethany with his twelve. So he goes into Jerusalem as part of this procession, and then he goes to the temple. So what were the steps that Jesus took? Where did he walk in the story? Well, first he went into the holy city, right? He approached the holy city, Jerusalem. And then he was part of a procession as he walked and rode along with all the people going toward the center of Jerusalem. And then he didn't stop there. It wasn't, you see, it wasn't about the popularity. It wasn't about the acclamation from the crowd for him. He was there for a purpose. He was there to go to the temple. Do you know why that was? Because the temple was where the people believed and where God told them that God's presence would be. They knew that wherever they came from, from wherever they lived, every time they pilgrimed back to Jerusalem, they could go to the temple and be in the presence of God. No matter what they had done, no matter what they needed forgiveness for, no matter how far they had thought they had been from God, they could go to the temple physically and be in God's presence. So what does Jesus do? 
He walks us all the way to the temple. He walks us all the way into the presence of God. So, that's the procession. Those are Jesus' steps. And I want to encourage you to see that this isn't just some old story that happened a long time ago, but it's something that we can take into our lives this week as we enter into Holy Week. The steps into a new life are things that we can make happen today. For, you know, there are three great things that live in this world, three great things that remain. Three things that Jesus showed us in what he did in this episode when he called the disciples to untie that, that, uh, <laughs> that donkey and bring it. He showed his authority. He showed that they needed to trust him, that it would be okay. And it sure was. Everything happened just the way he said it was, which is the way it always happened. When he told his disciples three times that he was going to have to die for them, but that he would rise again on Easter morning, they didn't believe it. But when they saw it happen, they sure did. Faith, trust. Is something that Jesus showed us. The second thing that he showed us was that, well, when you see those people praising him with Hosanna and blessed are you in, in the name of the Lord, blessed is he who's come in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, Lord save us, we see that there is hope. That's what these people were saying as they were waving the palm branches, that they had hope that he would rescue them, right? The last thing we see from Jesus in this is that he is coming into Jerusalem for the last time, that he knows it. With great love in his heart, in his mind, in his action, in his purpose, in all who he was, he stepped into Jerusalem in order to take our place. He knew that he would die here. And he knew that he would be victorious over sin, death, and all evil. And that he would give you that victory. So these three remain, right? What are the three that remain? Faith, hope, and love. These are the things that I think right now, as we are in this crazy world, as we have been thrown and hurled into a new life right now, these are the things that I think we can choose through the power of the Holy Spirit, because of what Jesus has done for us, because God has made us his masterpiece, we can choose to step into these things right now. We can have faith that God is going to be with us no matter what, and we can trust in other people as well, that God will use them to do good for his kingdom. We can have hope that, well, that this isn't going to stay the same forever, that things will change, and for the better. We can have hope that Jesus will not only sustain us through all of the things that we're going through, and for some of us, it's going to get a lot worse. I've spoken with many uh, people who have nurses and doctors in their families or who are themselves, and they're on the front lines right now. It's difficult. But yet, in Jesus, there is hope that lasts. There is hope that lasts not just in this world, but into the next. And finally, what we can step into is love. I've seen so many things in so many ways this week that people are sharing great love with their neighbors. By leaving messages on windows and sidewalk chalk, of taking care of neighbors who can't get out, who can't grocery shop for themselves, of putting their own safety in danger in order to save others. That's the kind of love that Jesus showed us. That's the kind of love that is sacrificial, that puts others above ourselves, just as Jesus did for us. These three things we can choose to step into. These are the things that create an incredible new life right where we are right now. So I hope today, as we, as we really focus on these on Palm Sunday, we see that Paul's words in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 were really relevant when it comes here. Because at the end, after he talks about how the three that are going to remain are faith, hope, and love, the things we see in how Jesus came into Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday, he also says, all these things will remain, but the greatest of these, is love. This week, God is going to use you to do great things in his kingdom. You're going to journey with us, with all of the disciples, with all of the Christians across the world through a Holy Week journey that is going to take us to the upper room to the Last Supper, that's going to take us to Pontius Pilate, it's going to take us to the beatings, it's going to take us to the crucifixion, but it's also going to take us to the empty tomb. 
And it's there that we see the greatest of all loves poured out just for us. I hope this week, as we see Jesus stepping into this new life that he won for us, that you too can step into that life. You can do it through the power of the Spirit by showing faith, hope, and love. So please, enjoy those palm branches. Say, Hosanna, Lord, save us. Have that hope, have that faith, have that love ready to go for another week in God's kingdom. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, today we come before you as people that are humbled by your grace, who are humbled by your presence, who are humbled by the way that your son Jesus walked and took steps to make sure that we would be connected with you forever. Because he died for us, because he rose again, we have life in your name. We have life not just lived in eternity, but lived today. And we ask that as we continue to live in a strange time, but as we go through this week of, of focusing on who Jesus is and what he has done for us, let us show the world that we have stepped into faith, hope, and love. Let these things ring out as true to all the people we see this week, that they might see your goodness and say Hosanna themselves. Lord, we pray for lives that are changed for eternity through the things that you will do through us, through your spirit this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
we would love to pray now. Uh, we usually receive prayer requests right now, but what we would love for you to do is to either uh, put some prayer requests in the comment feed sections that wherever you're watching from, or to use our online form at cblaker.info. Uh, it's a great way to get your requests on our prayer chain, and people can be praying for them uh, throughout the week. But for now, uh, let's take a moment together and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with us today, for allowing us to worship you, for allowing us to uh, think and walk through the story of Jesus entering Jerusalem again. We know that even as the crowd shouted his praises, that just a few days later, they would soon shout for him to be executed. And we know that in that fickleness, in that strangeness, in that, well, in that change of life that happens there, we see that even in the midst of it, that you are there by your grace to bring us back to you. What Jesus did for us changes our lives forever. And we give you thanks for that. We know right now that as our lives have been changed by all kinds of things in this world, whether it be unemployment, whether it be a quarantine that we're working through now, whether it be through illnesses and sicknesses and relationship strains and all kinds of things that just are all around us today, we ask that you would give us, by the power of your spirit, a sense of peace. We ask that you would quiet our fears, that you would heal our pain, and that you would, well, heal our relationships. We know, Lord, that through you that is possible, through forgiveness, through reconciliation, through all that Jesus has done for us, this is possible, so we give you thanks. We ask that you would be with those today who are struggling with illnesses, uh, people that we know, people that we love, we ask that you would heal their bodies. We pray for our country as we struggle with staying at home, with quarantine, with the virus that is going through our country and our whole world. We pray for all, everybody who's on the front lines of this, for doctors, nurses, medical professionals, for those who are making policies on behalf of others right now as well. We pray for clarity. We pray for, we pray for safety. We pray for great wisdom so that as many people as possible, Lord, can be saved. We pray for those who are mourning the ones that they love, that they have now lost. We ask that in their hearts, within the questions that remain, and the sadness that just sits so harshly, we pray that you would enter into that, and that your presence would be felt, that the joy of your presence would be there, and the peace that passes our human understanding would be with those who are mourning. We ask, Lord, that you be with all who serve us in political office and our armed forces and as local civil servants. Guide them each day. Let them remain safe and let them make decisions with great honesty and integrity. And Lord, we pray for everybody who is watching right now, who is worshiping you together. We pray that you would be with them in a way that is new today, in a way that is meaningful, in a way that will carry them through this holy week, pointing their eyes toward you in everything. There will be no despair that your hope cannot heal. There will be no pain that your joy cannot heal. There will be no disconnection that your son Jesus cannot heal. This we pray, trusting in your mercy, trusting in your grace, trusting in your unfailing love just for us. So together we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's join together in speaking the Apostles' Creed as well. It joins us together with Christians throughout the world and throughout the centuries. Let's confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We now have a moment to 
uh, confess our sins. And we do this corporately. We do this together as a people. Even though we are spread throughout space and maybe even time, we confess that we, well, that we're not God, that we are not perfect, but that Jesus has been for us. And we do this in such a way that joins us together as part of a community. So together, we're going to use the words that are on the screen to confess our mistakes and then hear the goodness of God and hear his forgiveness. So let's go ahead and let's confess. Lord God, we confess that we have chosen to listen to our own desires rather than your will in our lives. Please forgive us and show us your mercy. Remind us of the unfailing love that only you can give. And by your spirit, fill us with the peace and joy of your salvation. We know that when we confess our sins, God is faithful and he is just and he does forgive our sins. So I want you to hear that today, that wherever you are, whatever has happened to you in the last 24 hours or the last week, no matter what has been weighing you down, let those things go. Because God says, you are forgiven. Take that to heart this week. Have great joy in it. Know that you are connected with God through Jesus in such a way that the Spirit gives you incredible things to do and an incredible purpose in this life. Amen. As we close out our worship time today, we have a couple of announcements to talk through, and then we're going to sing another song. We're going to leave on a great note and a great song. Uh, so a couple things that are happening next here uh, in the life of Cross Point is we would like to celebrate with you. When we gather together, we always ask people for celebrations. Kids love this, adults love it too. Birthdays, anniversaries, anything incredible that's happening in your life, go ahead and put those in the comments right now. Um, but if you're not able to, you can go to our website, cpliquid.info, and you can go right to the Contact Us page where we have a prayer request form. We have all kinds of stuff. There's also a celebration form. Go ahead and fill that out and let us know uh, that's going on. We'll, we'll use these celebrations this week, and we'll say happy birthday or happy anniversary to you uh, during the upcoming week. Oh, the next thing that's happening is our Easter extravaganza. This has been super fun this week. Audrey and Tyler have been delivering Easter eggs in a safe manner uh, to houses uh, and creating their own Easter egg hunt in front yards of families. It's been so much fun. I hope you've seen the pictures on Facebook and Instagram of uh, so many smiling kids and happy families. Of course, always doing this in a safe, social distancing way. Um, but, boy, it's such a great way to bring Easter joy. If you would like that, uh, go ahead and send an email to Audrey at audreyacrosspointlakewood.org and request an Easter egg hunt in your front yard. All right. Um, it is Holy Week, so we have two things coming up that we are gathering again to worship. Uh, first is Good Friday, which is this Friday, hence the name. Uh, we are worshiping together online at 7 p.m., so join us right where you are right now at 7 p.m. We'll be there to worship and to walk through um, how Jesus got to the cross and what happened there. Again, spoiler alert, he died. But that's okay. It, we do this every year, right? Um, that's all right, because the point is walking through and seeing how it all happened and experiencing that in our lives and what it meant for us again. Super meaningful. 7 o'clock on Friday. Uh, Sunday, Easter, uh, we're going to be celebrating in lots of ways. Our first service is actually Saturday night at 5 o'clock. And then on Sunday morning, we'll gather here as well, uh, wherever you are right now, at 7.30 in the morning, 9 o'clock, 10.30, and noon. Pick one of those times, invite a friend, text them to join you online and worship with you. By the way, the 7.30 time is pretty close to Easter sunrise. It may be one of the only Easter sunrises that you get cross pointers because of Pastor John's <laughs> uh, inadequacies, but that's, that's how it is. So 7.30, 9, 10.30, and noon Sunday morning, Easter morning, uh, Easter evening at 5 p.m. for a great Easter celebration. So that's what's happening here at Cross Point. We're so glad that you were able to join us today on Palm Sunday. Hopefully you still have your palm branches and you're waving them around and singing Hosanna. Hopefully that goes all week long. Uh, and I want to give you a blessing before we go, before we sing the last song. So be blessed. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord find favor and give you great peace. Amen. All right, let's sing together. Mm -hmm.